What's up guys, it's all day Anthony and welcome back to the civic vlog that you hopefully know and hopefully love. In today's video, I'm gonna be showing you how I detail the interior of my Honda Civic after four months of daily driving. <laughs> All right guys, so like I said, it has been four months since I've detailed the interior of my Honda Civic, which means it has gone through all of winter without one single clean and has accumulated a ton of crap. Now normally I'll deep clean my cars every three to four months and in between I'll do some interior wipe downs or I'll vacuum and things like that. However, I have left this car as dirty as I can possibly leave it just to make this video. So everything I'm gonna use in this video is going to be catering to everyday people. I'm gonna try to utilize products and chemicals and things like that that you can pick up at your local big box store or auto parts store. Now for everything else, I'm gonna do the best I can to try to put links down in the description so you can pick these things up for yourself to follow along or just do the same process that I am doing today. Now what we're gonna do first is we're gonna go over all of the gear, chemicals, all of that, and then we're gonna jump straight into the cleaning video. Let's get at it. All right guys, so in front of me is all of the things I'm gonna be using in today's video. Now I wanna start by saying that no, you do not need all of this stuff. I've accumulated a lot of detailing gear throughout the years because I enjoy detailing, I detail on the side, and I kind of look at it as my therapy. Now, for the majority of people, I'm gonna try to build a basic package that looks a lot like this, or a minimalist package that looks like this. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to start big from the left and work my way down to the right, going over each product and telling you where I'm gonna use it and why I'm going to use it. Again, you don't need all of these things, so I'm gonna to try to utilize a few different detailing techniques on the interior so you can make the most of the products that you do have. So, let's start at it. All right, so starting big and with possibly the most expensive thing in this lineup is the McCulloch 1275 Forced Air Steamer. Now, this is not like your mom's steamer that she has in the closet that she uses to steam her clothes. This actually forces steam out and shoots it out kind of like a gun. And with the steamer alone, you can actually eliminate a lot of those other chemicals and detailing products. But again, the trade-off is that this is probably the most expensive thing. What this can be used on is interior fabrics, carpets, it can be used on plastics, windows, uh, pretty much everything because hot steam cleans pretty damn well and provides an extremely deep clean. So it'll help remove stubborn stains and things like that. And when using an all-purpose cleaner and a brush, it really just supercharges this entire cleaning system. Now, this is not necessary. I don't expect a lot of people to be freaks like me and have a forced air steamer. But like I said, if you do have this, it does eliminate a lot of those other products. Next on the list is compressed air. So what I have here is a little rigid pancake compressor with a uh, lot of hose. If you can see that up there, it's about 100 feet worth of hose. Another thing that you don't necessarily need, but compressed air is a huge tool when cleaning the interior of a vehicle. What this can do is shoot air and it can dislodge a lot of the dust and dirt and things like that that are in cracks and crevices that you wouldn't normally be able to reach with a detailing brush. This is an awesome tool to have, especially when combined with a shop vac because you can basically blow the dust and dirt straight into the vacuum, eliminating any need to brush or anything like that. Now, again, this is not a necessary thing, but it is extremely useful and I probably will be using this on a few cracks and crevices uh, to dislodge some dirt today. So getting into the necessities is a vacuum. You absolutely need a vacuum. Unless you're wanting to pick up every grain of sand or rock or dog hair with your fingertips, get yourself a vacuum. I've had this thing for about 10 years now and I picked it up at Lowe's for around 60 bucks and it has been uh, the best little vacuum I could have bought. What I like about this is that it is a wet dry vacuum and I highly suggest getting a wet dry vacuum because we can extract all the dog hair, gravel, rocks, sand, I don't know what the heck I've been driving this thing through, but you can extract it with this vacuum and then once you lay down an all purpose cleaner or an interior cleaner that has dampened uh, things like your upholstery, you can use the same vacuum to extract that and provide a deeper clean. 
Now the tool I use the most on this is called the crevice tool. It's called the crevice tool because you get into all the cracks and crevices on a vehicle or in a house or wherever you're using this. I often use this between the seats and center consoles or where the gas lever is or the trunk lever is and it gets into all those tighter areas. Now. If your vacuum did not come with this, I think it's an extra two or three bucks from the same place you bought it from, uh, but most of the time, these do come with these. All right, so next on the list is another kind of expensive thing, and this is a good interior light. Now, what this is, this is a scan grip eye match to light, uh, which means that it replicates the sun and it gives you a really good light output that you can just wear on your head to get into all the little nooks and crannies and get dust and see things that you wouldn't normally be able to see. Now, if you're detailing on a nice, bright, sunny day like I am here, not really necessary, but if you're detailing in a dark garage or if you're a weirdo and you detail at night, then this is a really useful tool. You can also use a flashlight if you want to go cheaper on this, but I love this thing, man. I use this for all of my oil changes. I use it for interior detailing and I use this the most when I am polishing. It is my go-to detailing light. So if you're not completely new to auto detailing, then I'm sure you've heard of microfiber towels. Now this is another necessity item in the regimen that we're gonna be using today. Now microfiber towels are not all created equal and there's different types, different styles, weaves, colors, all of that. Now for today's video, I'm gonna be using, of course, Rag Company microfiber towels. So what I have here here is a fender to fender. What I like to use this for is laying it down over the door seal so when I'm dragging my vacuum in or my steamer, I'm not rubbing that cord along that paint or along that side skirt. So I lay this down and it provides a nice, smooth, safe surface to bring in those cords. Now underneath that, are my all-purpose interior towels. What these are are Edgeless 365 towels from the Rag Company. They're a 70-30 blend, meaning that they're the best blend that you can get, especially for interior detailing, and do a fantastic job. These are extremely affordable, but if you don't want to order any of these, then maybe you can pick up some Costco towels or you can pick up some other, uh, hopefully nicer microfiber towels from your local big box store or auto parts store. So next up here is a plush microfiber towel. This is called the Eagle Edgeless 350. Uh, it is a circular knit weave, also a 70-30 blend, and would be considered overkill for an interior. However, I like to use this on more of the delicate surfaces. So on your Speedo gauge cluster, that plastic gauge that you see on there, uh, that will scratch if you're not using the right towel. So when the sun hits it and you see all those little white marks or scratches, um, those are typically caused by using cheap towels or just dry wiping. This is a fantastic towel for delicate surfaces like that, but to be honest, I think that's the only thing I'm gonna be using uh, this towel on. Uh, the Civic is uh, not so delicate. So there's that towel. Now under that is some dedicated glass cleaning towels. Now, like I said before, microfiber is not all created equal. So when using an all-purpose interior towel such as these, um, they're not gonna be so great at providing a streak-free finish like these would. So what I have here is a 73 waffle weave towel, which is used to knock down most of the junk and things like that on the windows with a glass cleaner. And then I follow up with a very short nap glass cleaning towel. It's called the uh, premium uh, Korean glass is what this one's called. And this is used to provide a streak free finish. So knocking down a majority of the gunk with this towel right here, and then following up with this towel for a streak free finish. So next up on the list is going to be toothpicks and brushes. So I use toothpicks for dislodging a lot of that deeper dirt uh, within the gas pedal, brake pedal, clutch pedal, and I'll also use these when I'm getting in between uh, the little buttons on the seat belt. So where it says press, that press mark is typically built up with a ton of gunk and things like that. So I'll use toothpicks for that purpose or if I'm trying to get into even tighter areas that I need to dislodge dirt or sand or anything like that, toothpicks are a must. Now brushes, are a necessity. This is, um, you don't need all these brushes, but you do need a couple of these because uh, these brushes will make your life so much easier. So first here, I have an upholstery brush. I'm gonna be using this on the carpets and seats um, and anything fabric that I need to knock out some stains or some deep grime, this is an upholstery brush. Next up is going to be a rubber cleaning brush. Now the rubber cleaning brush, the only thing I'm using this on is actually gonna be the floor mats. So this combined with a good rubber cleaner, makes those rubber floor mats literally look brand new. Now, if I didn't have rubber floor mats and I had cloth floor mats, I would just be using this same upholstery brush to clean those out. So next up is some nice detail factory brushes. Now, you can get away with using cheaper brushes, but I'm one of those guys where I like to buy it once and buy it right. So this right here looks like a makeup brush and it even feels like a makeup brush. What I'll use this on is I'll use this on my CD player, audio player, anything with a delicate screen or if I'm getting around any other delicate surfaces uh, like my steering wheel or anything like that. 
Now, next here is going to be a good old fashioned boar's hair brush. So the boar's hair brush is probably gonna be my most used brush in cleaning the plastics and getting between the door handles and getting between um, all the different AC vents and cracks and crevices because it is a stiffer brush, yet it is still safe and soft for all interior use. So now we're into the chemical portion of things. Like I said before, if you have that McCulloch 1275 steamer, you can actually eliminate a lot of these other chemicals because of how well that cleans. Now we're gonna start from the left and work our way to the right. So first up here is the Griot's Interior Cleaner. This is essentially a safe, all-purpose interior cleaner that can be used on virtually everything on the interior. Uh, I'm gonna be using it on the carpets, I'm gonna be using it on the seats. Uh, you can also use it on leather, plastic panels, uh, you can use it on LCD screens, uh, pretty, much, pretty much everything. I don't think there's anything that this thing can't go on, but what I like about it is that it builds a good lather, it cleans, uh, it doesn't really have a scent or a color or anything like that, but it does a fantastic job and I've been using this for a few years now. So next up here is the Meguiar's Quick Interior Detailer Cleaner, whatever you wanna call it. This is my follow-up to the Griot's Interior Cleaner. This cleaner right here is going to strip off all the old oils or UV protection that I have on my plastics, so I wanna replace that UV protection with something that leaves a nice matte surface. So this stuff does smell good, but also provides UV protection to protect those plastics from fading and cracking and, and things like that. So this is just kind of my follow-up just to that product right there. All right, so next up is not a necessity item, but I really like to use it. It's the Adams Tire and Rubber Cleaner. I like to use this on my rubber interior mats because it truly does make my mats look brand new. I mean, it really does a really good job. I believe this is a citrus-based cleaner, but really leaves my mats looking a lot better than an all-purpose cleaner. So what I'll use is I'll use this to scrub my mats, spray it down with water, I'll air dry or I'll blow dry with compressed air, uh, let them hang dry, and then put them back in the car and they truly do look brand new. Next up here is Optimum No Rinse, which has been my bread and butter in all of my detailing ventures uh, for several years now. So this right here alone can actually do a majority of everything that you see here. It can clean glass, it can clean interiors, it can do a little bit of everything. What I'm gonna use this in is the steamer over there. So I put a couple drops of this no rinse in there to make that steamer uh, super powered, I guess you could say. So no rinse is a rinseless wash that helps encapsulate and emulsify dirt and things like that. And it can be used on the interior, the exterior, a little bit of everything. If you've seen my previous Civic videos and you've seen that I have used Optimum No Rinse for a rinseless wash on the exterior of the vehicle. But again, this does a lot of use on the interior as well. So I'm gonna use it in the steamer, but you can also put it in a spray bottle and spray it down just like you would with that interior cleaner from Griot's there. Next up is another Meguiar's product. So this is part of the professional line and I think you can pick this up in most auto zones or O'Reilly's or Shucks or things like that. Uh, what this is, is this is a vinyl rubber cleaner conditioner. You can also use this on your floor mats. However, it will leave behind a little residue that is a, a little slick, I guess I could say. So what I like to use this on is actually my door seals. So all of the rubber trim and all of the weather stripping that I have on my door seals, I use this on to provide a clean, but also to protect them from cracking during the winter and summer months. So not a necessity, but a nice little add-on if you're trying to uh, refresh that trim and refresh uh, those weather seals. All right, so this is Meguiar's Gold Class Leather Conditioner, which is another product that you can get at pretty much almost any big box store or any auto parts store. I am only gonna be using this on the, technically the only leather thing I have on the whole car, which is my S2000 steering wheel. So I'm gonna use the Griot's interior cleaner to remove all the oils and things like that from my hand on the wheel, but then follow up with a conditioner like this on the steering wheel to keep it preserved and to keep that UV protection on the wheel itself. All right, getting into gallon sizes here. Uh, when it comes to detailing chemicals, especially things you're gonna be using a lot, I always recommend buying in bulk, especially when you can buy a bulk concentrate that you can dilute on your own. Sorry, I got these uh, damn dogs over here, but what we have here is some Chemical Guys All Clean, which is a citrus-based all-purpose cleaner. Kind of similar to the Griot's interior cleaner, but what I like about this is it has some more decreasing properties and is a little stronger. So what I have here is it diluted in a bottle at 20 to one using distilled water and a little bit of that. But just keep in mind, guys, I have had this going on for almost two years now, and that's how much I've used. 
A little of this stuff goes a long way and I don't always use it, but it does a pretty good job. So I'm gonna be using this on the deeper stains or anything that's really ingrained in the upholstery, the fabric or the plastic that I can't get out with the Griot's interior cleaner. So last up on the list is the Meguiar's Glass Cleaner Concentrate, which is also part of the Meguiar's Pro-Line products. Um, I don't know how else to say this guys, but this is the last glass cleaner you'll probably ever buy, mainly for the fact that it's impossible to consume all of it. Uh, this is a concentrate and it dilutes something crazy like 10 to one. And when it comes to glass cleaner, you're not using a whole lot. You're using a couple sprays on the glass. So for reference, I bought this almost three years ago and I have, uh, I've only used that much. That, that's pretty much it. It smells like grapes, so some people may like it, some people may not, uh, but it works really, really well in conjunction with a specific glass cleaning towel like we went over earlier. So um, this right here has been diluted and been sitting on the shelf for probably a year now and I've only used that much. So a little goes a long way. All right, so that wraps up all of the tools and chemicals I'm gonna be using in today's video. So I think it's time for me to stop talking and get to detailing. So let's get that thing clean. All right, so the first order of business is cleaning out all of these stuff out of the car. So I'm gonna take out the floor mats, take out all the trash and all the loose crap that's gonna get in the way during the detail. So I got myself my trash bag here and I'm ready to get started. All right guys, so with everything pulled out of the interior of the car, we have a really good starting point to begin the detailing process. So the plan for today is to clean the mats first. We're gonna focus on the rubber mats and these carpet mats, getting those clean and giving those enough time to air dry. From there, we're gonna bust out the vacuum and extract all of the sand and dirt and things like that, dog hair from the seats and the carpets. Now, immediately after doing that, we're gonna begin the scrubbing process and we're gonna pull out some interior cleaner, all-purpose cleaner and our brushes to focus on the upholstery and the carpets and give those a deeper clean. Then reintroduce the vacuum again to extract any of that liquid that we put into any of that fabric. Following that is going to be the plastics. So we're gonna pull out the interior cleaner, some towels and some brushes and start wiping down all of the panels and focus on these little intricate areas like the vents and all of that with the brushwork uh, to dislodge all that dirt and dust and things like that. Once we get done with the plastics, we will pull out the Meguiar's UV protectant or their UV quick detailer uh, that's gonna have those UV inhibitors in them to protect the plastic from the sun like we have beating down on us. Now, I will pull out the steamer for a couple things just to show you guys how I would use the steamer, but realistically, I know a lot of you guys don't have a steamer and don't plan on buying one, but I do wanna show you just what the steamer is capable of. Now, after we've done all of the interior, we're gonna be saving the glass for last. Uh, glass last, is that? that dumb? Anyways, so the glass is always going to come last because we're gonna have overspray from spraying those cleaners, all-purpose cleaners and things like that onto the glass. So that's always the last detail that I do. Now, with all of that said, let's start on those mats. All right, so with our driver's side rubber mat here, I've already shaken them out and gotten rid of all the loose dirt. So what I have is a hose. Uh, if you don't have a hose, that's fine. You can grab a spray bottle full of water and do the same technique here. But what I'm gonna do is spray down these mats get some of that dirt dislodged here. And then once I turn that off, I have the Adams tire and rubber cleaner. So this stuff, you don't need a whole lot, but I like to spray it pretty liberally because it builds a good lather. Spray some into the brush here, and then you begin scrubbing. cleaned and still wet, you can put them out in the sun like over here and air dry them. If you have compressed air, you can blow them out. Like that, or you can take a towel and blot dry them. Uh, in this case, I'm just gonna blow them out really quick and then throw them out in the sun. All right guys, so with your rubber mats cleaned, I still have these cloth mats that I had in the back seat. I don't have any cloth mats for the front seats yet, but I do wanna show you what I would do if these were really dirty. Um, these really aren't that bad since they've been covered by rubber, but just to give you an idea, what I would do is I would turn my shop back here, give it a quick vacuum. Now 
Now, with it being vacuumed, now I can actually spray it down with some chemicals. So, that Griot's interior cleaner here, give it a couple sprays. Then I have my upholstery brush here for the carpets and for the seats. Spray some into there. And so once I've agitated it, now I can just extract that liquid again with the vacuum. Now, if I had a deeper stain that I was focused on, that's when I'd pull out a heavier duty all-purpose cleaner, such as that citrus cleaner. And let's just say I had a stain right here. Spray it right there. Let it dwell for a little bit of time. Same thing, come back through agitate it, and then extract it again. Now, if I still had a ton of liquid left on the surface, that's when I could blot dry it with a towel and go back through, wipe it down, and try to absorb some of that liquid there. Now, with it extracted, if you want to be fancy AF, you could add some carpet lines into here by going like that. You'll see some detailers do this. I'm not really a fan of it, but it adds that nice uh, line look to it if you're, if you're into that. Um, but now what I'm gonna show you is how I would clean a mat or how I would clean a dirty mat with a steamer here. So same basic step, we're going to extract it first with a vacuum. And then pulling out our steamer here, always shoot away, make sure you got pure steam coming out. And then taking our brush, there's also brush attachments for the steamer, we're going to steam and then scrub. Now, if I wanted to supercharge this steamer here, what I could do is I could spray down some all-purpose cleaner. And then when I put this hot steam on here, it helps emulsify that dirt or sting even more. And just like that, you have your perfectly clean mat. So those are just the mats. I'll do another example on the carpet there and on the seats, but uh, that's for the people with really dirty mats. All right, so hopefully I haven't lost you guys yet. I know this might be boring to some, some might like it, but it's time to move on to the vacuuming step. This is really straightforward, guys. I'm sure many of you have vacuumed a car. Now, I do wanna show you really quick the benefit of having compressed air. So this being my compressed air hose, give myself plenty of slack. I can pull my vacuum around too. And what I would do is I would essentially blow the compressed air into the vacuum when it comes to uh, dirt like this. So I'm gonna show you, let's turn this on. So if you have a compressor and it doesn't have to be anything major, I have a little pancake compressor over there and you have a shop vac, makes it super easy. I can get under the seats, shoot out all that hair, shoot out all that loose stuff uh, straight into that vacuum here and it makes it super simple. But let's pretend that you only have a shop vac here and you can only vacuum the car. So remember that fender defender I was telling you about? So what I like to do is lay this over the side skirt here. So when I'm bringing that hose in, I'm not rubbing on the paint itself. So for an example, rubbing on there. All right, so at this point, we have done our first vacuum. I say first vacuum because we're gonna be coming back again after we actually scrub the carpets with a cleaner and a brush. We're going to re-extract that liquid with the vacuum again. So before we jump into that point, I do want to focus on some of these smaller details uh, that I can dislodge some dirt and things like that to where when I re-vacuum, I can pick that up. Now, for example, taking our toothpick here that I was talking about earlier, these seat belts. So you see all of that that's collected inside that press sign there? We're going to just pick all of that crap out because that just looks terrible and it's probably a bunch of dead skin from the previous owner since I've never cleaned these before. Nice, not perfect, but I will take it. All right, so with the interior vacuumed, now it's time to actually clean the carpets and the seat with an actual cleaner and a brush. Just to show you what I would normally do here is I would take my interior cleaner, pre-spray the carpet, get all that on there, and then 
taking our upholstery brush that we had before, this guy right here is when I would start to agitate. Now what you can do to kind of reduce the amount of wetness that you're putting into the uh, carpet or the seats, you can take a towel and follow up and scrub and try to remove some of that moisture out of there. Okay, so you guys know how I tackle the carpets. So for the seats here, these are pretty dirty. I am gonna bust out the steamer in just this case just to show you what I would do. So for this, I would pre-spray with an interior cleaner or an all-purpose cleaner like I have right here. And then at the same time I'm steaming and trying to emulsify that dirt and activate that cleaner there, I'm gonna have my brush and agitate this. Once I do that, I can take my towel, re-wipe that area. So these seats are already so worn. <laughs> these things are so old that I don't know how much better I'm gonna get them, but it is nice to know that I'm removing a lot of whatever the heck that is on the surface. Now, because I have O&R on the steamer, I don't necessarily need an interior cleaner. I don't have to pre-spray like I'm doing right now. I could just use the straight O&R steam inside here to do this, but again, you wanna agitate this as you're going. And voila, I'd like to say that these seats look like they're out of 1999, which they kind of do, but after uh, the previous owner smoked in them and sat in them and made sure they looked all crappy, uh, that's about as good as they're gonna get. All right, guys, so the hard work is done. We've gone ahead and vacuumed, we've cleaned the seats, we've cleaned the carpets uh, with cleaner and the steamer, and then I did some toothpickery on the seat belt buttons here, and even on the pedals down there, and they look much, much better. Now, the fun part is actually cleaning the plastics and the steering wheel, and uh, I hate cleaning glass, but the plastics is pretty fun. So I'm gonna show you a quick demonstration of what I would do with steam here on this door panel. Now I have no other cleaner. I don't really need any other brushes. All I need is a microfiber towel and my steamer here. So make sure getting steamer and not water. And we're gonna go ahead and just steam this whole door and then wipe it down with a microfiber towel. But even on the uh, little small, I don't know what you'd call this fabric here, on these uh, elbow rests, you can even use a steamer on there and scrub it with this towel. So I'll show you a quick example. And so we can clean all of that using just a towel and just a steamer. So like I said before, if you have a steamer, a little bit of O&R in the steamer goes a long way and really, keeps us from using all these other chemicals, especially when it comes to plastic panels. But I'm gonna clean the rest of the plastic panels with just a towel and some interior cleaner and show you how I would do the brush work. So on this door, I'm gonna be using the cleaner and a brush and as well as a towel here. So Griot's interior cleaner, make sure that lid's on there. Uh, we can spray down the panel. if We wanna spray down the panel like that. And then I'll spray some into the brush. And then if this panel was really, really dirty, I would do this whole thing like this. Now for this being a lower pile fabric, we can also use that same brush as we were using before, using the boar's hair brush. And we can agitate it like that. However, this material is so grippy, if I were to use any brush, it would be that upholstery brush and I would lightly go over it with that and just brush out any type of dirt or grime. And then on the little inserts here where you would put trash and stuff, I'll spray cleaner down into there. You can take a brush and agitate it down there in the bottom like that if you wanna do it like that. Typically, because the area is so dirty, I'll just use that towel 
and that'll be the end of the life of that towel, or at least the end of the use for that towel would be wiping out the, uh, the trash pockets. Now for the other plastic panels, I'll kind of crawl in here without getting my feet too far in. And this is literally just spray and wipe. Spray down in there, spray up top there, wipe that down. This cleaner, like I said, will remove the old protection that you might have had. So if you put a dressing on here previously with UV protection, it will help remove that. So when you apply the new one, it sticks even better. Okay, so finally we are on the front dash of the car, the thing that you see most when you're driving. Um, so this is pretty straightforward, really simple, basically same concept. We're gonna spray down these panels, but we're gonna use a brush to get in between the air vents here, around all this stuff, little cracks and crevices. Down here in the center console here, I will utilize uh, more of the boar's hair brush, but I do have this soft bristle brush here. I'm gonna show you really quick kind of what I do. So on the steering wheel, for example, spray, spray into there, a couple sprays into the brush, and then build up a nice lather like that. So this is gonna help out remove all those oils from those greasy fingerprints. If you've been going out and eating fried chicken and driving your car, this is what you need. That should leave your steering wheel feeling nice and new. If you have a leather steering wheel, if you have a Honda Civic steering wheel, then it's gonna feel nice, new, and rubbery. More rubbery than ever before. All right, so if you remember, I was talking about the delicate areas, I like to use a plush towel. So for this, I'm grabbing that Eagle 350 here, spray a couple sprays, a little bit of glass cleaner onto here, and I'll use this to clean my nav screens or things like that because I know that this towel literally can't scratch anything. So giving that a wipe down, and then I'll save it for my little Speedo here. Spray into there, and then go through, and then wipe all that dust down. All right guys, so we are almost done with this detail. The second to last thing to do before we clean the glass is gonna to be to wipe down the plastic panels with some type of UV protectant. Again, I'm using this quick detailer from Meguiar's because it does have some UV inhibitors and leaves a nice matte finish. So for this, spray it on. You can get this stuff pretty much on anything. It's not gonna hurt anything and just re-wipe it. And you can see, it doesn't really change the way that the plastics look. It keeps a nice matte finish. I don't really like the whole armor all oil look on a, on cars. So I typically just use this on the Civic and on the Evo. And it has a nice, I don't know, lemon scent, kind of lemony, a little bit of vinegar in there, but uh, it'll help neutralize any more odors or anything like that that you still have in the car. And it leaves it nice and slick, really smooth. So with the interior dry, we can finally put the mats back in and then we can knock out the glass.
All right, so glass cleaning doesn't have to be overly complicated. To get streak-free glass, it's pretty simple. All you need are some good glass cleaning towels and a good glass cleaner. So with that Meguiar's glass cleaning concentrate in here, all I'm gonna do is give it a mist here and then grabbing a waffle weave as my major knockdown towel. I'm gonna knock down all the grime that built up on the windows. You can use the boxing method if you want to or whatever you wanna do. I'm just going to get it clean first. And then from there, I'm gonna grab my glass towel. This is gonna give me the streak-free finish. A couple sprays on here, one small spray on here. And this is gonna have some grab to it, but that grab is a good thing. You want that grab because you know it's clinging onto the glass and really removing any streaks that could be left behind. And just like that, there you go. Now, the outside of the glass is dirty, so it would be a lot more impressive if that outside was clean, but just showing you on the inside here, this is how simple it is. All right guys, so with the glass cleaned, we are pretty much done. Now the last thing that I like to do, and this is just me, not everybody likes this, is to add in my favorite air freshener. My favorite is the CSSX3. Some of you guys probably know what this is if you're a JDM fanboy. This is a squash air freshener. It's my favorite smell. If you wanna know what my specific smells like, it smells like this and I absolutely love it. So um, this is the old one right here. So this is a brand new cartridge. Open this bad boy up and um, I don't I don't really know how to describe the way it smells. It's called squash. It's a Jap it's like it smells like Japanese candy is kind of what it smells like. So it's pretty simple. Throw in the new cartridge just like that. And then we throw on the top and that just clips right in. And I set it right there. So my car smells fresh, clean, and like squash candy, which I quite enjoy. All right guys, so that's going to wrap up the video. If you've made it to the end, thank you so much for watching. I don't know if this was boring or if it was entertaining or just helpful. Uh, I'm not sure, let me know down in the comments. Now, I know my interior isn't perfect. You don't have to tell me. The previous owner smoked in here, so there's plenty of burn holes in there. The back has some puncture marks and all sorts of ugly stuff, but it's good for now. It's good for now and I'm happy with it. Eventually, if I can find some replacement seats and things like that, I would be more than open to it and swapping those in. The carpet's still in good shape. The panels are okay. I could definitely uh, reupholster those if I wanted to. Uh, but all in all, I'm just happy that I have a clean car. I feel better driving in it, so I'm not smelling all sorts of weird smells and most of that dog hair is out of here, so I'm pretty happy. Now, again, if you're interested in picking up any of the stuff I use today, I'm gonna do my best to put all those links down in the description so you can follow along and use all the same techniques and products and things like that that I did. However, if the only takeaway is a few tips and tricks, then I'm still happy that I was able to provide that. So again, guys, if you like this content and wanna see more detailing stuff, please let me know down in the comments. If you like this video, make sure you give me a big thumbs up. Please, please, please subscribe for more because uh, there's a lot going in store for the Civic and I think it's a fun process and I'm having a lot of fun with it. And I know that having subscribers motivates me to keep producing this type of content. So here in the future, I'd like to make an engine bay cleaning video as well as an exterior wash or detail video or something along those lines. So again, please subscribe if you guys dig this content. So as always guys, thanks for watching and I'll catch you guys in the next one. Salt Anthony. Peace.